So after investigating the alerts, now it's time to have a look at the uh, incident response. Um, we have the incident uh, related to the um, credential theft for the user Jill. This is the SUS IP address. So uh, what we can do is to block this IP address on the firewall to prevent any further connections from, uh, from the source and disable the user from uh, Active Directory to prevent it from being used anywhere. All right, so we have username and we have uh, source IP. The username in the uh, incident module is called uh, affected, affected user. So let's create a playbook which will do just that um, while asking for an approval to perform, to actually perform these actions on the uh, security infrastructure, so AKA firewall and the, uh, the Active Directory server. So we go to uh, playbooks. We can use the same um, playbook collection and we can add a new playbook. Let's call it theft remediation. Potential theft remediation. All right. So we create the uh, playbook. We can set the uh, trigger to uh, manual. So we can um, trigger it um, from the incident uh, module. Uh, we have to run the playbook uh, once for each separate incident. So we select run separately for each uh, selected record. And we select the incident module to be the one uh, on which the, um, the playbook will, uh, will run. So we save. Uh, we can create a first step where we collect the required information. In our case, it's a username and a source IP address. So let's call it a set input data. We will need a username and we will need a source IP. Source IP. So the username is, uh, we can take it right from the incident module. It's the um, affected user field and the source IP is source IP address. All right, so now we have these two uh, variables that we'll be able to use uh, in our playbook. Uh, the next step is, is to take approval before uh, executing these remediation uh, actions. So we create a new step. This step is approval. We'll give it a name, Let's say, um, approve remediation action and then we will select the team who is eligible uh, to approve or a user in this in our case we'll take a team so anybody of the SOC team can be has the uh, ability to approve this uh, these actions and then we have to detail what are we uh, asking uh, for approval for what for so this is to block the source IP address on FortiGate and disable the stolen credentials on Active Directory. Uh, we select the methods. It's, it's going to be either by email. So the uh, approver will receive an email with a link uh, on which um, uh, the link which will open uh, this interface and will take the user to the uh, approval uh, panel or system which is basically uh, the approval which will just pop up here so that's it we give a, we give it a name for the step we select who who's eligible uh, to approve a description of uh, what to approve and of course the method uh, by which the approval uh, process will uh, will be executed so we save it now, um, we need to capture the decision of the approver. So we need to understand whether the uh, analyst has approved these uh, actions or not. So that's why we need a decision. So we select decision. Let's call it is, is approved. And then uh, we'll come back here. 
But before we do that, before we define these, this decision step, let's add the other steps. And I'll explain a bit later why it's important to add the steps first and then define the uh, decision. So let's save it. Uh, so we have two options, right? So either the analyst will approve or not approve. So if the analyst doesn't approve, we don't have to do anything. Um, maybe in the future add uh, a comment or uh, maybe send an email or something. But for now, we will just do nothing. So we have in the utilities, we have an action called no operation, which is basically just don't do anything, right? So we call it uh, no action, all right? And the other option is to actually perform the uh, these two tasks, which is one, disable the uh, source IP on FortiGate, and two, disable uh, the user, uh, sorry, block the IP on FortiGate and disable the user on Active Directory. So we go to connectors, we look for FortiGate, Then we can give it a name to uh, the action. Uh, let's call it, uh, well, block source IP or malicious IP or anything you want. And then we select the action, the block IP address. Now, the connector has two methods. So we can either block on the policy or in the using the quarantine feature. We can leave it to the quarantine feature. And in the IP address, we will use one of the variables we have defined earlier, which is obviously uh, IP address. We can define for how long. All right. And that's pretty much all. Of course, if we have a VDOM, a specific VDOM, we have to uh, specify on which VDOM this block uh, will happen. All right. So that's the first uh, action. The second action is the same thing. So we go to connectors. We look for, uh, we look to, for Active Directory. All right, and this is this action is disable username. Select the remediation action to take. In this case, disable user account from Active Directory. And then we will have to identify the user uh, to block with uh, one of its attributes. We can use either email address. Uh, we don't have it, so we're going to use the SAM account. The account name is stored uh, each time the playbook is executed in this username variable. So we select and save. What if the IP address or the username is not populated? Because we cannot expect all the incidents to have uh, a source IP and a username. Some incidents are, you know, they don't, they just don't. Um, uh, maybe some disc-related incident or, or any other incident. So that's why we have to take care of that. We have two options here. So either we take the same uh, decision approach where we say, we take a decision, we say, if the IP is populated, so you take the action, otherwise you don't do anything, etc. Uh, alternatively, we can, do, we can go with um, a more efficient way, which is to use the condition option within the step itself. So each step has this condition uh, option that we can leverage to do that. So basically, this is just to say, as long as the condition is true, so you will execute this step. Otherwise, you just skip it. So this is exactly what we will do. So we'll take this uh, variable and use it as a condition. Now, the Fortisor uh, workflow engine uses Jinja as a templating language. So basically, whenever we need to manipulate data, process data, we use this uh, templating language. And in Jinja, the expression to verify whether a variable is uh, defined or not is simply is defined. So if the source IP is populated, it, there's data in, in the variable, the, this will be true. This expression will return true, otherwise it will be false. So we save and we do the same thing for the username. So we take the username variable and we use it here as a condition. 
Now we can go back to our decisions tab and populate it. So basically we are checking whether the uh, analyst has clicked on approved or not. Uh, so let's set a condition for that. This information is actually in the approved variable. So this variable will be set to true if the uh, analyst uh, has clicked on approved and false if the analyst didn't. So in the expression to check whether variable is true is is same as true. So this expression means if this variable is true, so basically take this action, otherwise we'll, we'll have the other option. So if this is true, we will block the IP address, and here, we as, as a tooltip, we say yes because the the step name is uh, is approved. So the reader will read is approved yes, and then do uh, so take this path. Otherwise, this is the else. We take no action. All right, we save, and we uh, can. Uh, maybe just review the this step one more time so basically we test whether this variable that we took from the approval step is true if it's true we will proceed and block the ip and then uh, block the username provided the ip is not uh, is defined and the, the username is defined uh, otherwise we basically don't do anything all right so let's take this saved we can go to our uh, incident, our uh, playbook is called credential theft remediation. So we look credential theft remediation and we execute the playbook. This was a previous uh, execution. So let's check the logs. So good, we have the two variables uh, populated and then we go to the point where we have a, an approval pending. So we close this and we open the approval panel. So this is our approval. And then we click either on approve or reject. Let's start with reject, for example, and see that the playbook takes actually the right path. So exactly as expected, um, the analyst has uh, rejected the actions, so there's no action uh, taken. Let's do quickly the same thing while approving it uh, this time. So, credential theft. So we will have the approval here, and this time we will approve the two actions and we can track the execution right here. And as you can see, the uh, IP was actually blocked. Well, it was already blocked in the firewall, but the uh, response is successful. And the same thing for the Active Directory. And by this, we have finished the uh, remediation playbook.